ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Allegheny Northern in N-Scale. Today we're talking about the next step in building the passenger terminal, which as everyone knows occupies and is the mainstay of my peninsula here. It's basically a place for all of my passenger trains to originate and terminate. And although they have various stations throughout the layout that they can stop at, this is essentially a place to not only display the uh, locomotives and cars, but uh, also a place to basically get them off the layout. So it features two major components. Obviously, one is the the platforms where uh, passengers will get on and off, and the building where you will come in from the street level. So there will be an overpass bridge here, and there will be the Station itself with a grand entrance, maybe some columns is what I sort of mocked up there. And then there'll be an upper level parking lot, which is right now storage for backdrop painting. And of course the layout runs underneath it. And what it does is it hides a ridiculously tight nine and three quarters inch radius turn. So the peninsula there is pretty tight. And although all of the locomotives, even the three axle ones, will ride around it comfortably, it, they just look ignorant on it. It's just, it's very tight and it's not designed for, for, for show. So I buried it underneath downtown basically. And so there'll be a parking lot here. I'm actually thinking that I might put some skyscraper type buildings on the end. I, I don't know. This, this needs to look like a city because this is a very city urban, um, terminal. So I started scratch building the platforms and the roof structure and although all of that is still in the works that's still part of the plan uh what happened was is when everybody panicked because you know there was some pandemic was going to kill us all or some i don't remember what it was but i stopped going to the hobby shop because well quite frankly it was just a pain in the ass to go out anywhere so what i did was start ordering pieces online and for whatever reason i could not find the parts and pieces i needed to finish it so it's sad now the other, the other feature of this uh, terminal is that there is a small yard off to the side. This will keep a locomotive busy from time to time, shuffling around the auto racks. Obviously, there is not enough space here to properly represent an auto facility, loading, unloading, anything like that. However, my intention is through signage on the road and through a little bit of scenery down here to give you the impression that there is a much larger platform somewhere, you know, off here that's that's taking care of loading and unloading these these cars, baggage, that sort of stuff. So it gives a place basically to store those components of the train. Plus it adds operation because now I can take the cars from the freight side of the passenger operation, run them down the yard lead there to the main line, and then attach them to a waiting passenger train. Uh, at the terminal. So it, it adds some operational interest. Whether that's how they do it in the real life or not, I don't know, but that's how my railroad is going to handle it here, and that's what Amtrak's going to be doing. So, but this whole video is not about the operation of the terminal. It is about building the next component, which is going to be, as you can see, some repairs are needed. It's going to be the terminal building. So what I've been doing as I've been replacing components with actual final structure pieces, I take off the mock-up piece because it doesn't serve a purpose anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this sort of building shape with a Walther's kit. I'll show you in just a moment what that's going to look we like. We all have these grandiose ideas of all of these wonderful projects that we're going to get to. And I was going to scratch build my terminal building and it was going to be wonderful. And then I realized, boy, that's, that's, really, that's a really stupid idea because, quite frankly, there's a kit that almost looks exactly like what I wanted to build. So why reinvent the wheel? I've already got molded stone. Uh, I've already got the columns that I want, although not quite in the configuration that I want, so we're gonna work on that. But this is a fantastic starting point. So this is the Walters Union Station. This is going to be what I use as my building. And like I said, it is already exactly in the configuration that I want, with the exception of the entrance. We gotta do something with this entrance to make it a little more grandiose let's say so what i think i'm going to do to this kit just to give you a, a, a little spoiler here is i'm going to move these columns out just a bit so that i can actually build a drive canopy to this station 
and it'll be a place for passengers to get either off the bus, off the car, um, off their bike, whatever it is they took to get to the train station, undercover and away from the weather because this is going to represent a northeastern Pennsylvanian type uh, rail station. And as we all know here in southwestern Pennsylvania, all it does is rain or snow. And if it's not doing any of those two items, then it's probably just cloudy. So having a covered roof to get into the station is going to be nice. The kit does come with instructions, gives you a little bit of history of the building it's modeled off of, which is the Union Station in Omaha, Nebraska, no longer used by anybody um, as at the time of this printing, which was obviously uh, sometime around uh, 2001 based on this. The building was in disrepair. I have no idea what the status of it is now, but ours is going to be very much in service. The instructions are very clear because essentially you are building a box. So once you read through the instructions and understand how the box is put together, there's not really a whole lot else to talk about here. Now, one thing that I will tell you is I am not going to glue the roof in place because my intention is that someday this will have a detailed and lighted interior. And until I get all the lights in place and the interior built, I don't want to put the roof on because then, well, it'll be just pain in the ass trying to get it in there. Now, you could theoretically build the inside off of the base shape and just set the building on top of it, but that seems like it's going to limit some access. So no roof getting glued on. We will just assemble it and place it on top, much like we've done with the roundhouse that's already on the layout. So... I'm not going to show you every step of the build because it's a square. And if uh, if you can't build a square, um, this may have been the wrong hobby for you. So we're going to go ahead and, and get this thing assembled and get it sort of pre-painted. What I want to focus on is the stuff that uh, is different from, from the standard build. So uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of the weathering techniques I use, a little bit of the painting techniques I use, and then, of course, what I'm going to do to build the canopy. So, if you're interested in how that's going to turn out, stick around, and it'll be right here for your viewing pleasure. Okay, so before we get into talking too far about the canopy, I want to show you what I've done so far. So, um, this kit comes with instructions. I never really took them out of the packaging. and I, I didn't use the instructions. Uh, all of the shapes are basically, you can figure out where they go. It only goes together in one, one pattern. So, um, if you can't figure it out, uh, it does have instructions. But, uh, basically what I did is I built this model in three sections. Um, the two wings and then the main terminal. Uh, the roof sections are just loosely fit in here they're actually not glued down uh, because at some point in time I do plan to put an interior in here and light it so the roof comes off just so I can do that um, the other thing that I did not do is I did not put the base uh, I used it to square up the uh, terminal but I did not put the base on it because I'm going to need these column uh, pilasters for my scratch built uh, uh, canopy so uh, I didn't want to glue that in place I was going to need those uh, I took uh, the Tamiya accent panel liner, the first thing I did, uh, and, I, and I went through the whole thing. And, and actually, I lied to you. Uh, it's not the first thing I did, it's the second thing. The first thing I did was when, I, when these pieces were all still on the spruce, I sprayed everything in Tester's doll coat. Um, because it had a natural stone brick, which some of that color is sort of appearing through here a little bit. Um, but uh, I wanted to preserve that as much as I could, so I used the Tester's. Then I used this accent liner to bring out the mortar joints. I did not like the way it colored some of the stones, made them look darker, it didn't look right. Um, so I went back over them with uh, several colors here. Uh, these are simply uh, Model Masters paints, uh, the 1709 and the, now of course this one doesn't have a number right available here. This one's concrete flat, they're 4876. And I used, I'm not going to call it a dry brush. I'm going to call it a damp brush. Um, and what I mean by damp brush is uh, I had a little bit more paint on it than you would a dry brush, but not as much as you would if you were trying to paint something solid uh, because I did not want the paint to flow into the cracks that I worked so hard to um, show. I didn't want to cover up my joint detail. Uh, then I came back and simply with uh, a dark ghost gray, uh, which is 4761 here another model master paint color 
uh, I painted the trims. The last thing that I did was I found in my collection here uh, a very old tester's paint, but it is a graphite, uh, and it is a metal. Uh, it has metal, uh, the metal series. It's got the metal flakes in it, and I painted the doors with those because it looks like uh, like a bronzed aluminum type uh, paint. So that looked that looked really good. Uh, I have to add the roof fence yet. I, I haven't done that. It wasn't high on the priority. I wanted to see how this canopy was going to work. So uh, then the last thing I did was to get kind of a chalky, powdery, dirty effect. Um, I used the Monroe uh, colors. I used the dark earth, the dark gray, and the chalk white that are back, that's back there. And that's how I got this look. Okay, um, now let's talk about building the canopy. Okay, so here's the kit assembled, painted, weathered, basically ready to go. Now what you will notice uh, in this whole uh, scheme of things is the front is missing. So what I mean by that is on the front of this model, there are columns that go right here, okay? And that's very similar to the mock-up that I had. That's my crude mock-up, there's my overhang, and the columns have fallen off, but there were some columns. There they are right here. And they, they came down here and there was a grand set of steps. Um, and this was the basically the passenger station that overlooked the terminal down below. So you would enter off of this, the main concourse, you'd get your information, and then you'd make your way down to, to the trains. Okay, so now, this being the drive lane in, and this would be where people would be dropped off, uh, I think I wanna take those columns that would be here and move them out to here. Okay, so that gives me a nice big canopy for all of the visitors to the uh, station to uh, depart undercover, to arrive undercover, you know, you're waiting for your bus, your car, your Uber, whatever the hell you're getting in to get out of here, we would park here, and then uh, you could be undercover out of the elements, which is a very key uh, feature in a lot of northeastern and mid-Atlantic stations where chances are when you come out, it's not going to be sunny. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do is have to scratch build a canopy that comes off of here using the columns that the set comes with to sit right about here. And this is going to be, um, this is what was to mark up, uh, mock up a sidewalk. So this would be where the sidewalk would be. So I think we're going to come out here and then we're going to drop straight down um, so that we have a nice canopy. So let's take this kit back over to the workbench. And I'll explain to you a little bit about what I did, how I modeled it, uh, weathered it, painted it, and then I will show you how we're going to do the canopy. Okay, how I designed the canopy was no uh, major uh, secret. Uh, I simply decided how big I wanted this thing to be in relation to the building, and then I cut out a piece of plastruct corrugated um, plastic. Now, it's, it's very thin, uh, and that's fine because we are just using this for the underside because this corrugation actually looks like aluminum paneling that you would see on the underside of an aluminum panel canopy. Now, there are a US standard shit ton of canopy options and basically whatever an owner wants, uh, they can have fabricated uh, once engineering approves it, of course. So uh, for our purpose, this is gonna make a lovely paneled ceiling underneath for all of our guests to walk in on. Now, what you're not gonna see is that typically there would be rows of lights and they would be centered over the doorways and such. Um, we are gonna do that, uh, but that is a later project and another detail. And right now this building is not getting lighted. So we are going to uh, simply skip that step for now, but we are gonna make provisions for it so that when we come back later, we can always add lighting. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I had a parking lane. So that would be where um, you could get picked up or dropped off. I wanted to have an in lane, so let's flip this car around here. I want to have an in lane here so that you could drive in uh, and pass the station and go off into parking, or uh, maybe you were leaving, and so you're heading out this direction. Now what that shows me is that I have eh, an extra lane. And so I was thinking, do I want that extra lane or do I want to uh, maybe end my canopy a little bit short of where I originally mocked it up. And the answer came back to, to myself here that I want to end the lane a little bit short. So my, 
my columns are going to sit in this strip right here. So with my trusty little carpenter's pencil, I'm going to go ahead and mark that off and then we're going to cut this piece. Okay, one thing to consider with this particular operation is now this piece typically would be mounted up underneath here and it would be in this recess and it would be the ceiling um, to close off this big opening that we see under here, okay? Now, because our canopy is cut like such, this is going to be our new structure and this is just going to slide into here and it's going to provide that enclosure so that we are sealed from the underside. Okay, now what that means is we are going to take our column base, now that our columns have moved way out here and we need to mount this out here so that our columns have somewhere to be received into. All right, now we've got a couple of options in, in doing that. We can have them inboard a little bit or we can move them outboard a little bit. And for our purpose, you'll notice these are offset just a smidge here. So we don't want that piece hanging out side here necessarily. So we're gonna flip this around and give this a little more prototypical look, okay? So that is the look we want right there. And I'm gonna show you why that's important here in just a minute when we frame off. Now, what I'm doing is I'm actually building this as the bottom. So I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna flip it over upside down, but I use the existing building here to provide a measurement for me as to where this piece needs to go. So all I'm gonna do is glue this thing into place. Okay, so what I did here is I took the base that we glued to the underside of the styrene and I got it attached. And then I used a razor saw to remove the uh, column bases from the base that is part of the building. Okay, so uh, now you say, well, why did you bother doing that? Well, because I want this base to help keep this building square. This base and the base on the wings um, they, they interlock and they kind of give this whole structure, um, some, some shape on the bottom, kind of hold it together. So I wanted this to have that rigidity. So I simply using a razor saw, cut this off. Um, so between the razor saw, the hobby, hobby knife, um, and, and it was nothing special. It was liter literally just the, uh, Atlas razor saw. So, uh, if you don't have one of these, I think they're like eight bucks, nine bucks, go get one. Uh, it'll make your scratch building a hell of a lot easier. Um, but now, anyway, so we've got this part of our canopy together and we're letting the uh, Tamiya cement fully dry here, of course, but uh, once you flip it over, all right, now you can kind of see uh, how this whole thing is going to come together. All right, so we've got a pretty pretty decent uh, setup here. Uh, nice drive canopy, fits the building, and uh, it's not realistic that we are going to be able to scratch build this particular detail that they've got here on the side all the way around. I mean, I guess you could sit there and painstakingly uh, reenact that with with uh, styrene pieces. Um, and if you want to do that, you know, go all out. But what I'm representing here is, okay, this is the original building. And this is a modern addition to it, which you see all the time. This is very common. And so that's what we're doing. This is a modern upgrade to a otherwise historic building. So this is pretty flimsy. This is not what you would really see in real life. You wouldn't see this just sort of uh, hanging out here and just, it's gotta have a side. It's gotta have some sort of structure to it. So we're gonna go ahead and, and build some structure to give this thing a little bit of depth. Okay, so an assembled canopy structure looks a little something like this and that's what I was looking for give me nice drive lanes under here still an impressive looking building um, and I didn't glue the lid on so I wanted to show you what what I did here so first I took um, some styrene that we told you about earlier as corrugated it would be the underside um, and then there is an angled piece right here and that angle is strictly to hold on my siding piece and then there are some u-channel pieces these are going to feature uh act as conduits for future led lighting they are spaced directly over the doorways so um, there's that and then i just had some extra pieces so i 
simply cut them up and that's to glue this canopy structure to the the main structure so there's nothing fancy there and then when all is said and done this piece will be glued right to the top here and that will act as our roof so as you can tell it's pretty dark under there so we do need some lighting so that we can uh, light up our entryway but that is what the canopy structure is going to look like obviously now this needs to all dry and it needs to be touched up and painted and all that sort of stuff so we're going to go ahead and do that by the time you come back to see the final results this will be painted and sitting over on the probably shouldn't leave you hanging so here are the splash struck pieces that i was using so um our u shaped pieces are 90583 our flat pieces that make up the uh, perimeter here they are 90779 and then the l pieces that we use to attach that all is 90504 so if you're looking to mimic this and then the uh, flat pieces here that's just stock flat styrene uh, any size will do all you're doing is looking to to cap this off okay so here is our finished terminal building with drive entrance canopy obviously it needs lighting to look fully you know impressive here but not not a complicated scratch build actually it was quite easy but it does give me the look that i was looking for and that is we have a very old structure that was you know part of original construction some modern renovations made to make it fit the current uh, clientele and we have our drive canopy so we can start working on the surrounding area so you know there's going to be the drive lanes obviously sidewalks around it and then you know parking lot and, and that sort of thing when you come around the back here obviously right now it is basically precariously hanging over over nothing so this is all going to get filled in uh with plastic uh, either either styrene uh, construction or i might actually use foam core because foam, foam core is a pretty uh sturdy uh, building material goes together with just hot glue and i can actually build this out so what i want to do is build it out and then uh, actually have a little bit of a, a flat area back here probably to right about where, where this is sitting here and this will just be so these doors have somewhere to go and there'll be a um, sort of a terrace back here before the actual uh, terminal down below sits so the game plan will be once you if you get to the end here and you're looking from say down track level up the platforms you will see the stairs and everything that go up into the terminal itself so uh still a lot of work to do but you know finding this this kit from walther's uh really saved on some some time and some effort because i don't have to recreate the wheel i can just use something that's already built and um, i'm very happy with the look of this thing it was a fairly easy kit to build but the results are impressive it is a big structure you can tell by looking i mean it's taking up a pretty good chunk of space there so once it has a full lighted interior and everything around it's built this is going to be a very impressive structure to to dominate this this island